Well, we'll see how this live stream connection is going to go today here. So I'm just going to wait for a little bit. I'm pretty excited about our topic today. You, the speaking spirit, and your words, a divine entanglement. Mm. All tangled up together. Praise God. Hallelujah. You, the speaking spirit, and your words, a quantum entanglement. We're going to pick up again in our book by Annette Capps that we've been reading from Quantum Faith. And before that, I want to do a little bit of a review because I know that Many of you are still coming online or joining my YouTube channel or the Divine Healing Questions and Answers page here on Facebook is where these videos are done live and then they are reposted to the YouTube channel. So I'd just like to welcome all of you today that may be new members to either place. I could say, welcome to my house. Hallelujah. My two-room house. <laughs> uh, Facebook and YouTube. At least for now. It may be expanding into some other things a little bit later. But I just want to do the review because, as I said, I know that I'm getting new people coming online and I'm never sure what the level of biblical knowledge is for people. I don't want to launch into more complex discussions such as we're going to have today without laying some basic foundation to work from, to give people understanding, to grasp the things that we're going to be talking about today. So let's pray. Father, I thank you today for your word. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, Father, thank you that you made us a speaking spirit. Oh, Father, we need to go to school and learn the capabilities that you have given us because of that. And so, Lord, I thank you today for a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. Father, that you open the eyes of people's understanding to their high calling and great privileges that you have given us not only by virtue of the first creation, but by virtue of the second, being a new creature in Christ. And Father, I thank you for it today in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, and John, speak, just reestablishing the fact that you are a spirit living in this human body. This is a human body, but inside this human body, you have a building not made with human hands. You have a creation of God on the inside of you. In John 4, 24, we read that Jesus said, God is a spirit. Some versions say, God is spirit. So, Whichever way that you're used to saying it, God is a spiritual being. His substance is spirit. John 4, 24. Then in Genesis 1, 26, he said, Let us make man in our image and after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the earth. And so in those two words in Genesis, image and likeness are two different words. Image means being made of God's substance, a spirit. Likeness being, it means being made in the form, the shape of God. 
We read in the Bible that God has hands, eyes, feet, just different things. So God has a body, and our body is shaped like his body. He made us in his image and likeness. Then, uh, I don't know if it was last week or the week before, we saw how God gave Adam, after he created him and placed him in the garden, he gave him a lesson in how to use words. Said God created all the animals and the birds, and he brought them to Adam and had Adam name them. And the scripture says, whatsoever Adam called them, that was the name thereof. Ooh, ooh. Just all of a sudden, it's like I saw a book open. Oh, and our that was the book of our body. Oh, Father. The book of your body. And whatsoever you call the name of it, that's what it is. You, the speaking spirit, your words, and you're the speaking spirit, and your words, a quantum entanglement. I could say you, the speaking spirit, your words, and your body, a quantum entanglement. He created the animals. He brought them to Adam, and whatsoever Adam called them, Whatsoever Adam called them, whatsoever Adam called them was the name thereof. What Adam said, it was. What Adam said, it was. You are an Adam. God has brought you your body. And what you say over that body is what is. What you call it, it is. I'm just kind of getting ahead of myself already this morning, but I just saw that when I said that statement, whatever Adam called it, it what was the name? We name things over our body with words. We name things in our body by using words. Oh, goodness gracious. Again, going back now, oh, I just want you, whew, just want you to think about it. your body's like a book. What are you writing on the book of your body every day with your words? Oh my goodness. Whew, takes my breath away, Father. So in Genesis 2, 19 and 20, God was giving Adam a lesson in using words. Back to the fact that you're a speaking spirit, that you are a spirit in James 2.26. James writes that your body, you even notice that, that pronoun, it's a possessive pronoun, your, like your house, your car, your whatever it may be, your job, your children, your money, that's a possessive pronoun. James used a possessive pronoun to show that your body is your possession, is a possession, that's all, of you, the real you, who is a spirit. You, as your, your body, without you, the spirit, will be dead. It will cease to the force of life that right now is energizing your body that is coming from you, the spirit on the inside. Once your spirit leaves your body, the energizing force of life will have left this body and it will drop on the floor lifeless. What is death? What is the death of the body? It's life leaving the body. What is a dead body? What do they call it? It's life, lifeless. 1 Thessalonians 5.23, again, Paul showing and demonstrating that we are a spirit. I pray, God, your whole spirit, 
soul, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 1, 9, Paul said, I serve God with my spirit in the gospel of his son. Hallelujah. So you are a spirit. You possess a soul and you live in a body. Your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions are a possession. You, the spirit, make them go and do where you want them to go and do. The same with your body. Your body is the house that you live in. I wanted to read to you a statement here from Chuck Missler. We're talking about things today that are outside of our three-dimensional spatial world. We're talking about eternal things today. We're talking about eternal revelations. Everything that I've said to you from Genesis is, in, is a revelation from outside of time. It's a revelation from eternity where there is no time. Oh, this is such a wonderful, wonderful message or statement here. The Bible is a message. Why should we believe it? Because it has come to us from outside of our time domain. It's an extraterrestrial message. Terrestrial, not meaning aliens, like the world uses the phrase. Terrestrial means the earth. Extra means it's outside of. Its origin is outside of this earth, this three-dimensional length, width, and height world that we live in. Speaking of those three dimensions, and I realize we add time, but we're, that isn't our issue today. We are in possession of this collection of 66 books, which we call the Bible, written by more than 40 authors over several thousands of years. Yet, we now discover it is an integrated message from outside of our time domain. It, this book has come to us from outside our world. It's an extraterrestrial message. It isn't like an earthly book that just tells you things that orig its origin is outside of the four dimensions, length, width, height, and time in which we live. This is a supernatural book. It has supernatural origins. It has a supernatural author. That's why we should believe it. Mark 11, 23. Verily I say to you, this is the supernatural being saying this to us. I say to you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith, believe that the things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have what he said. He shall have what he said. If he believes and doubts not that he can have what he said that he can have it because he said it. It isn't that we doubt God. We doubt ourselves. We doubt our ability to say something and can see it happen. But the Lord has been showing me what a spiritual being that we really are. You know, I catch people. I, I, I watch people. I assess people. I, the things I read in books... People that say body, soul, and spirit tell me right off they know nothing about the fact that they're, they may mentally assent, but the living reality that you are a spirit, that you possess a soul and you live in a body, it's not real to them. When you know, when you have the revelation, when you have believed this book that came from outside of our time realm, outside of our four-dimensional world, it's extraterrestrial in its origin, and it says, I made you in my, my image, I'm a spirit, and I made you a spirit. Oh, really? I'm a spirit? Wow. 
and we receive that extraterrestrial message and we believe that extraterrestrial message and all of a sudden in starting with terra firma body soul and spirit we're speaking from the eternal reality that's been revealed revealed to us i am a spirit i possess a soul and i live in this body but i am a spirit oh hallelujah that applies to every person that has ever come into the world every person now there are those of us what kind of spirit are we we are a new creation in christ jesus according to second corinthians 5 17. and who is that new creation according to galatians 2 20 it's no longer i that lives but it's christ jesus that lives in me going back this statement in mark 11:23 that you could speak and have what you say, even if you're commanding a problem to be changed in your life. If you're commanding the, your body to come into divine order according to the stripes that Jesus paid on the cross for your well-being, you can have it. You can have it. You can have it because you're a speaking spirit. God created you as a spirit, and what you call it, it will be. What you call it, it will be. What you call it, it will be. You just have to believe it. And doubt not in your heart that what you call it, it will be. I love you, Lord. Mark eleven twenty three. <laughs> oh, anyway. Jesus came from outside of our time domain. He stepped out of eternity and into our world, and he said to us, If who will say to this problem, this mountain be removed and be cast into the sea, and doesn't doubt in his heart that he can have what he says, he'll have it. Now, I am automatically expecting that the what you say is going to be in line with the redemptive work of the cross. Not some squirrely idea that you've gotten in your head or some lust of the eye that you've gotten. Hello? I won't meddle in that anymore. Oh, you the speaking spirit and your words, a quantum entanglement. You know, this subject of quantum entanglement is directly tied into, it's an understanding that has come in the realm of quantum physics. And I have been doing some reading on that for quite a while and, and wanting to tie it here to quantum faith and how I could express it to you. And oh, the Lord has showed me some wonderful things. But just to start with, he gave me a verse here to start with. He said, you want to talk about it? entanglement? Quantum physics talks about how two little particles are entangled. And they're so entangled together that no matter how far apart they spread them, what happens in one immediately affects the other because somehow it's spooky, they called it. Spooky, Einstein called it spooky. <laughs> spooky action at a distance. <laughs> well, it is kind of spooky. Why? Why is it spooky to us? Because it's out of our five sense realm. We can't see it. We can't understand how that can happen. Hmm. But when you get God on the scene and you know that he created the atoms and he tangled them all together when he created them, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, then you don't have any problem believing it. Oh, yes, sir, I see that. I see how you did that, Father. The wisdom of God that was there in the beginning with him when he created the world. Proverbs 8, wisdom says, Oh, I was daily his delight, always rejoicing before him. I was with him when he laid the foundations. I was there even before the mountains appeared or the seas. Oh, hallelujah. My delight is with the children of men, the wisdom of God says. And so God's wisdom can help us understand quantum entanglement. We can just step over all of these scientific labors that go on and just believe it hallelujah so anyway going over here to john this is oh mm, this is where the lord took me oh, to quantum to show me the reality the scriptural reality the spiritual reality.
the relational reality of quantum entanglement. John chapter 17. Let me get my glasses here right quick. Oh. This is verse 23. I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect. Okay, now that was one of them. I'm going over here now. See, I don't have the exact verse here, but I'm sure that you'll all know. Sanctify them as if... <laughs> anyway... I don't know where the verse is right now. I didn't look it up before I got on here. I just keep meditating on it. But it says, Father, I'm in you, you're in me, we're in them, and they're in us. <laughs> what do you make of that? You go, I'm right here, and they're over there. How can that be? It's spirit. Spirit operations. God made you a spirit so he could stay entangled with you. He made you a spirit so you could stay entangled with him. And it just isn't him you're entangled with. It says, Father, I'm entangled in you, and you're entangled in me, and they're entangled in us, and we're entangled in them. You go, ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. hallelujah. And it's instantaneous communication just like it has been proven in quantum physics that two particles somehow are entangled by some force quote some force that when something happens to one the other is immediately affected by it mm. Ooh, the creator created this world as a shadow of his realities. He, the Trinity is entangled in themselves. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, they have instant communication among themselves. We have instant communication with them. They can have instant communication. They do have instant communication with us because there is no time that you are untangled from them now that you are a new creature in Christ Jesus. God's Spirit lives in you just like God's Spirit lives in God. And there's an instant communication that goes back and forth. There is an instant effect of the words that you speak even on the atoms of your body. They instantly react to the things that you say. There is no time delay. It says whatever Adam called them, that's what they were. And it wasn't that's what they were 6,000 years later. It was at that instant when Adam said it, that's what they were right then. Instant communion. See, this is the point I sense that the, what is my title here today? You, the speaking spirit, your words, and your words, a quantum entanglement. This is what the Lord's wanting to main point I sense he's wanting to make today. That your words, he created you so that your words are entangled with your physical body. They are also entangled with your soul, your thoughts, Andrew Womack, imagination, Kenneth Hagin, words, attitudes, everything that goes on in our soul has energy behind it, and it's entangled with your body, and immediately what you think can affect your body. It, your blood pressure can go up. Your body can get lethargic, you know. <laughs> Just in a funny way of looking at it right now, I'm thinking of ice cream. <sighs> ice cream sundae, hot fudge, ice cream. And what I say, ice cream, just say ice cream. Maybe whatever your favorite thing is, just say it. Just say the words, come on. Whatever your favorite thing is, just say the words. <sighs> and your body goes, huh? Let's get some right now. Now, I, I call that an instantaneous reaction, wouldn't you? <laughs> so that shows you right there, but we don't observe these things. 
at a, at a spiritual level. Quantum physicists are exploring these things in the natural level with electron microscopes. Oh, I was watched a little short video the other day about how those things work. They are some, whoo, I just want to talk to you sometime about those because I think I got the wrong, there's different kind of microscopes, but the one that they use, if they do a scan of your, a body scan, put you in that thing and do a body scan, that is pretty something. How deep it goes into your body at the molecular level, the at, down even to the at, atomic atom level of your body. That microscope can go in, shoot radiation things in there, like a laser beam or whatever. I don't even know what I'm talking about. I just saw it. I don't have the terms. But it's fabulous what it can do. And it does it instantaneously when that beam comes from that, whatchamacallit. I'm excited today. Instantaneously. That beam comes and it goes down in your body and it reads all those different parts of your body. Quantum physics is developing things that show the possibilities and actualities of instantaneous communication. It's been developing for a long time. I think right now, years ago, if I think Marconi developed the telegraph, and when the first telegraph message was sent across the Atlantic, your words instantaneously affect you. Why? Because you are a speaking spirit. Don't let the words originate here necessarily or in your emotions. We can reason, we can have imaginations, we can have negative emotions, we have feelings in our body of different things. Someone sent me a video link to a testimony that a Andrew Womack had. And this woman, I think her name was Rose something. I'll put, the, put it up here, uh, or you can look it up. I'll put a link to it or whatever. And she found a lump, went there. The doctor told her that she had cancer. <clears throat> she said, I've been a doctor a long time. My hands know. They took her that very day and did the scan. She said, I want my husband in there with me. They said, that's not possible. Well, she said, I'm not having the scan unless he is. So the husband went in there with her. They said, we know it's cancer when the little fingers grow out off of it. And so they did the scan. Sure enough, the little finger showed up. The husband got right out of his chair and went over there and laid hands on her and started speaking in tongues. And she said they watched that cancer disappear right off the screen. And the doctor said, there must be something wrong with that machine. Let's do another one. And then they did a probe. And so it's a fabulous, fabulous testimony. When that husband began to speak in tongues, those words instantly communicated to that cancer in that body. Your words are, God ordained them to be entangled with your body at the level of the atoms of which they're made. Cancers are made of atoms. Oh, and I am not going to go into all of that. Everything in this world is made of atoms. Even diseases are made from atoms. Whatever. Sometimes the atoms are lacking. Well, I was born without sight. Well, then speak the word and create them. Jesus did that <laughs> the other day. I woke up and the Holy Spirit, he said this little, I was thinking about all these things and how God just spoke words that just quantum entangled with stuff and the effect that it had. And so I'm thinking of, I hope I'm going to get to this today. What time is it anyway? Half hour has gone by. <laughs> uh, I woke up the other day and the Holy Spirit said to me, what did I do with my phone now? I don't know. But he said, I split the sea, I turned the water to wine, and I opened the eyes of the blind. I said, what? He said, I split the sea, 
I turn the water to wine. I open the eyes of the blind. Well, okay, Lord, I know you did that. He said, there's a way I did each one of those with quantum entanglement. So I'm thinking, hmm, that water turned into wine through the avenue of quantum entanglement. God in, oh, <clears throat> God entangled his words with that water, his spirit with that water. In creation, God entangled his words, the spirit entangled God's word with the chaos of creation. Words. What did the Lord say to me September the 2nd? Words, words, words. The golden key. Why? Because your words are entangled with this creation that we live in. Why? So you can have authority over it. So you can call things that be not as though they were. Oh, thank you, Father. Whew. So I said, hmm. He said, yeah, my word's entangled with that Red Sea and split it. So I said, hmm. My words in, oh, entangled with that water and turned it into wine. I said, hmm. My words entangled with the eye of the blind and gave them sight. Go on. Oh. And by that time, I just wanted to, like right now, it's scary almost to be in the presence of that kind of power and that kind of wisdom. And that's the one that's entangled with us. His spirit in our spirit. Our spirit in his spirit. His words, Jesus said, if you abide in me and let my words be entangled in you, not only having his spirit entangled in us, but having his words entangled in us, then you'll speak and see it happen. I'm going to read to you now for a little bit, if you don't mind. <clears throat> Annette Katz, Quantum Faith. Oh. Looking at it from a surface level, Mark eleven twenty three would seem to be a ridiculous statement that Jesus made. How is it possible that spoken words could send a mountain into the sea? For the past 27 years, it has required faith on my part to believe that words were that powerful. Recent study in the area of quantum physics, however, has convinced me, convinced her mentally. She believed it by faith with her spirit. Your spirit believes God but her head got convinced. I got convinced that what Jesus spoke is absolute scientific fact. Jesus was speaking a scientific fact here in Mark eleven twenty three. You go, what, what? I thought Jesus just talked about spiritual stuff. Well, he did talk about spiritual stuff, but that spiritual stuff established a scientific reality that the physicists are just now figuring out. As I studied the theories of quantum physics, I was reminded of a prophecy given by my father, author and teacher Charles Capps. He said, by the spirit of prophecy now, some things which have required faith to believe will no longer require faith. Some things will no longer require faith 
for it will be proven to be scientific fact. When Jesus said in Luke 17, 6, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you would say. He was speaking of the smallest seed that could be seen in his time. If he were here today, he might say if you had faith as an atom. <laughs> Hallelujah. Or even smaller. They've got discovered now atoms are made of these little quark quarks. He are even smaller if you had faith as a quark, which is a subatomic particle. Q-U-A-R-K. The point he was making, though, was that small things, small things that cannot be easily seen. You can't see your faith. <laughs> small things that cannot be easily seen manifest themselves and affect things in this larger world that we live in. Your little bitty measure of faith in here, your little atomic measure of faith, your little quark of faith in there, Oh, it's so small and you can't see it, but it can affect mighty things around you in this seen world. I just love that, don't you? <laughs> Ooh, the supernatural life for me. Quantum physics is the study of things so small that we cannot see them, yet everywhere we see everything. Quantum physics is the study of things so small that we cannot see them. But everything around us was made and is made of these subatomic particles. These subatomic particles are so small we can't see them with the natural eye. That's what they need electron, electron microscopes for and things. These little quarks and stuff. Well... These little teeny tiny things you can't see made all of this that you can see. Your car you're going to get into today. Your food you're going to eat. The little bitty, little bitty unseen things make up everything that is seen. Mm. Think about it now. Faith. I just got a little faith. Or I can't see my faith. Oh. But your faith, hallelujah, faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence, the title deed, Brother Hagen used to tell us, the title deed to what you haven't yet seen out here in the natural. <laughs> anyway, going on. Yep. Remember, Hebrews 11.3 says, Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen out here in this five sense realm, came from things that can't be seen. That'll mess with your head, all right. Huh. Listen to this here. The chocolate cake you ate yesterday, or whatever, but she's using this as an example. The chocolate cake you ate yesterday was made from things that you can't see with your eyes. The recipe calls for water. Well, you do see the water. But before hydrogen and oxygen, which you can't see, combined into water, you can see anything. You can see the hydrogen. You can see the oxygen. But some machine put the hydrogen and oxygen that can't be seen together, and you saw the water that came out of the unseen. The two that weren't seen, the seen water came out of them. Before the hydrogen and oxygen combined into water, you could not see anything, yet the substance for water was there. The hydrogen and the oxygen, the substance for water was there. Before God spoke and said, let there be light, there was substance there to make light from. Oh, boy, 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 boy. Now listen to this next one. The sound vibration of his words. Just stop and think about that. The sound vibration of God's words. <laughs> well, his written word, when you quote it, is the same word of God that vibrates. Hebrews 4.12, the word of God is quick. It's vibrating. 
and it's powerful, and it's sharper, it's quick, quick, it's vibrating, and it's instantly entangled with, that, with whatever it touches. It instantly reacts upon. <clears throat> the sound vibration of God's words caused the substance that was in them to manifest and appear. Words are energy, and energy affects matter. Then we talked about the microwave. We talked about what you say to your car, you stupid piece of junk. Those words are vibrations of energy that affect the atoms that make up your car. This can get you pretty weird. You walk out the door, and you look at your car, and you say, hmm, you're made of, you're made of atoms. <laughs> but it's the truth. You look at your body. Start looking at your body and saying, hmm, you're made up of atoms. Because it's true. That's what they look at when they put you under one of those. They do a scan. They get down and look at your body at the level of atoms. <clears throat> Scientists have performed experiments with atoms and their subatomic particles such as electrons. If you paid attention in school, you saw the diagram of an atom with the electron orbiting it like the Earth orbits the sun. And this is the typical picture that we get in school. The interest oh boy. The interesting thing is that scientists have discovered that the electron, the little things here orbiting the nucleus, these little electrons, aren't always there in a particle form. They exist in a wave or cloud state. Everywhere at once until someone looks at it. When the scientist observes it or looks at the atom through that microscope, it changes from a cloud form to the particle form that we're used to seeing. The particle form that we're used to seeing in school was correct in the beginning. But now they've got microscopes that can go down to even the deeper levels into an atom and see that the little protons and things are just existing in a cloud-like state until someone actually looks at them. Then they take on the form of that little particle that we're used to seeing in our school books. When the scientist observes it, it suddenly appears as a particle. Well, <laughs> are you ready for this? this? This is why your body's listening to you. What we all want to know is, how does it know someone's looking at it? How does that little proton that is in a cloud-like state turn into a particle all of a sudden because somebody looks at it? How does it know somebody's looking at it? Because God made it that way. God made us to have dominion over the earth. Particles interact with us when we talk to them, when we look at them. Ooh. I hate my body. Look at that on there. Oh, look at that there. We're not even saying it. It's an attitude that comes off of our soul on the inside when we look at our bodies. It can be fear if we've had a bad diagnosis. Your body even can sense those emotions, those, the, the attitude that is generated by thoughts. <clears throat> we all want to know, what we all want to know is, how does it know someone's looking at it? It is obviously responding to the observer's interaction with it. One of the difficulties in quantum physics is that the particles be behave somewhat differently for each observer. Which the particles behave differently for each observer. Which leads me to the question... Do they behave according to what the scientist believes? Mm. In any event, we can definitely conclude that Jesus was right when he taught that all matter responds to faith and words. The substance from which our words, the substance from which our world is made 
is influenced and manifested by words. The things that you even desire are made up of atoms. And they know what you believe, they hear what you say, and they will behave accordingly. Well, that's a statement and a half, isn't it? The things that you desire are made up of atoms. They know what you believe, they hear what you say, and they behave accordingly. Now, you're speaking to atoms. They're out there. They're in this nebulous state. Let's say you need money. Well, it's out there in an atomic, and in, in the form of money's made up of atoms. So the atoms that you need are out there somewhere. <laughs> and so you start calling your money and Thank you, Father. You meet all my needs according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Thank you, Father. You know what the birds of the air need and you feed them. You clothe the lilies. And Father, you said that if I seek you first, that clothing and food and everything I needed would be added unto me. If I seek first your kingdom and your righteousness. John, Matthew 6, 33. Speak God's word. That's Yes, you can speak your words and muddle around about it. But just speak God's word. And all of a sudden, the atoms out there somewhere, they'll go, hmm, someone's calling for me to create something out of. And they start coming together. <laughs> We've seen it in movies and stuff of things being created. Maybe sci-fi movies or a movie about Genesis and creation. And all of a sudden, they all things start coming together. You know, I heard somebody say one time, like in uh, Star Trek, the transporter thing, when the people get in there and they reduce them all to a bunch of atoms and they transport them some way, somewhere else and they, they put them all back together again. Well, a lot of the things in Star Trek aren't so far-fetched anymore. <laughs> oh, dear me. Oh, you want something to dissolve? Then speak to it and command it to be removed, a cancer, whatever it might be, an infection in your body, this, that, something else. <gasps> oh, dear me. You want to create something? Then call things that be not as though they were. Two ways we can use words to command the problem to go and call what isn't into existence. Hallelujah. Now, this is interesting. What time is it? Beliefs. Thoughts and beliefs that you carry also produce an energy around you. See, so it isn't just your words. It's your thoughts and your beliefs about things. <clears throat> Life never works out for me. So and so and so. If you love people and care about them, they will feel drawn and be with you. If They will feel that and be drawn to you. Have you ever been around someone who is pleasant and full of love? It is an energy that you can actually feel. When you believe that God loves you and wants you to prosper, then you change your words and beliefs about money. Instead of thinking lack about money, you start thinking money comes, money comes, money comes, provision comes. Uh, Charles Capps did it. Her father did it. Hundreds of thousand dollars in debt. And the Lord told him, you get out my word and you write down everything I've said about you having your needs met, you having your body healed, which he did. And he began to confess them. The Lord said, you confess them every day. And he did. And he said within a week, his attitude about things started changing. See, what the first thing that started affecting was his beliefs about things. The word begins affecting your beliefs first. Then when you speak, the... the uh, Adams will listen. <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> when financial challenges used to come my way, I would fall into fear and fall into fear and begin saying things like, well, now we won't be able to pay off the car or the house or whatever. The fear and speaking of it is an energy that affects your checking account and stops your financial freedom. Oh, boy. That's a tough lesson, too, I'll tell you, to learn that. To learn to overcome the fear of lack. Now, I have learned to think and believe and say, things always work out for me. Everything that I do prospers and I have abundance in Jesus' name. Wouldn't hurt us all to adopt that statement. 
Things always work out for me. Everything that I do prospers and I have abundance in Jesus' name. Are you going to see it the first day? Probably not. Are you going to see it the first week? Probably not. Did Charles Cap see all of his hundreds of thousand dollars of debt disappear overnight? No. But within a year, things began to really change for him financially. But first, he had to get everything established in here. He said it cannot be a formula. It can't be a formula you're working You've got to be consumed with it and believing it on the inside. Then when you speak, I had a little lesson the other day that I got. I wanted to share with you all. Things obey words is the next section. Frequency and vibration of words. Strange quantum behaviors. Oh my, faith language and quantum theory. The way things work in quantum theory is so weird and bizarre that we really don't have the language to describe it. This is one of the reasons that most people have no interest in quantum physics. It simply isn't understandable to most people. In order to believe the words of Jesus, it is necessary to let go of old ideas and open yourself to new ones. You let go of your beliefs in the way you think things work, and accept a new set of beliefs. You let go of your beliefs in the way you think things work, and you accept a new set of beliefs. The principles of faith and confession that Jesus taught seem like nonsense when seen from a worldly point of view, but Jesus said that we are not of this world. We are in the world, but not of it. We operate in a different set of laws, which Jesus called the laws of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is the realm where God lives. Different realm, different rules. Current medical science says that lepers and cripples cannot be healed and restored to perfect health in seconds or minutes. It takes time. Did Jesus bypass time? Yes, he did. Huh. I think that's what the Lord's... Oh. Did Jesus bypass time? Yes, he did. And I believe that's the point. You, the speaking spirit, and your words, a quantum entanglement. Yes, it took a long time for Charles Capps' debt to be reduced, and it does take time when things are outside of your body. We're talking he healing here for your body. When things are outside of your body and involve other people, it can take longer for those atoms to give substance and to come to you. But the point here is, and even that she, she is making, that Jesus transcended the realm of time and his healings, his manifestations, were nearly almost instant. I think the Lord, I know some of you are new here again, but those of you, the divine healing and these teachings that I'm doing here on YouTube, for YouTube also, the whole point of this is to help those of you that have no one to pray for you. For you have health issues and you're not in a country or in a place where you have access to someone, another believer even, to come and pray for you. Or a believer that can pray the prayer of faith. They may be a Christian. They don't know anything about healing. They just It's an if it be thy will type of situation. A person like that cannot pray the prayer of faith for your healing. You may have been prayed for by some famous evangelist or teacher that has come your direction. And you're still having things in your body. Maybe you've been prayed for numerous times. So that's my reason for establishing these teachings that I have been doing here on the Divine Healing Questions and Answers page since 2016. I have learned to get healing through by listening to the word of God and the spirit helping me to do it. He'll say, do this, do that. I've got a little situation right now in my body. And 
and I just want to teach you right now from my, an experience of just my current experience. It's a little scary. It's rather intimidating. And I don't speak. I'm not speaking very confidently yet about it. And that bothers me because I know what I'm teaching is true. And I know that situation is not going to be affected without me speaking words in confidence about it going. So I'm laying in my bed the other night thinking about how I'm just not quite as confident about the situation yet as I need to be. I know the word. I can quote it to you. I can quote it just like you can. I can sit here right now and go through all of this and rejoice and shout and carry on. But when I shut this thing down and I close this book, I'm just like all the rest of you. I have to find my confident expectation in every situation. And I've got to know that I have it. It says, if, you, if I believe and I don't doubt, then I'll have what I say. And I'm still in that little wavering place. And I'm not ashamed to admit it. Because every new thing we face, we go through this little wavering place. We have to pass over this bridge into the state of confidently speaking to something. Oh, I'm laying in my bed. And I'm talking inside myself. I'm not talking out loud. I'm talking inside myself. I curse you in Jesus' name. You get off my body. You shrink and shrivel up and, and be gone. You disintegrate. <laughs> and so I'm just kind of laying there saying those kind of things inside myself. And the Holy Spirit, he is the teacher. He is so sweet. He said, just keep saying. He's just so encouraging when you need encouragement. He said, just keep saying it inside yourself until your confidence builds up and then say it out loud. Hmm, that's interesting. I said, so Lord, you, you mean I need to build the confidence inside myself first? Stand, so I'm standing up on the, see, but that goes back to what we've read so many times in 3 John 2. Beloved, I desire above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. See, my soul is still just a little bit intimidated in this whole situation. So he said, you just keep saying that confession inside yourself and build up your confidence in there and that soul. So your soul gets in agreement in this whole matter and it gets confident and it gets established. Then when you speak to that thing, there'll be no double-mindedness and you will have what you say, just like you have in other situations. And, hmm, okay, I can do that. Oh, in Jesus' name, you disintegrate in the name of Jesus. See, now I can sit here. That's what I've been saying. That seems like that's what the Lord has given, this phrase that keeps coming to me. You disintegrate in the name of Jesus. And those words keep coming to me, and I say them, and I can sit here. Now I'm teaching you from my own example here, too. So that's why I'm sharing these things. And so I can sit here in front of you, and I can boldly, you disintegrate in Jesus' name. But again, when I turn this broadcast off and the anointing of teaching is kind of settling down again and I'm just back to me. <laughs> I've got to stick with what I said. i got to believe what I said. i got to believe that that thing is disintegrating just like I said. i got to keep believing. i got to keep believing. I can't let my mind go, oh no. I can't feel it and go, oh no, it's still there. I can't do that because if I do that, I'm double-minded. And if I'm double-minded, I won't get it. Hallelujah. I got to be single-minded about it. So I'm, I'm just telling, just sharing with you my realities. We just need to, we can learn from the Holy Spirit. He is so precious. He said, just keep saying inside yourself. Your confidence is building up and then 
It'll come out your mouth and you'll feel confident and you won't waver and you'll have what you say. I've had it happen many times in the past, but it's like each new situation is another different mountain to climb. And you've got to all start, if you're baking a cake like, and you're putting all your ingredients in here to get this next project taken care of. Whether you're speaking to a mountain and commanding it to be removed, or you're calling things, Romans 4, 17, and that be not as though they were calling things into existence that you need. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. <clears throat> so, anyway, you, the speaking spirit, and your words, a quantum entanglement, a quantum entanglement. When that statement comes out of my mouth, you disintegrate in Jesus' name. And my faith is entangled in those words. It's going to happen. That thing is going to be gone. And that's the end of it. And I'll have another wonderful testimony to, to give and another victory to chalk up to Jesus' stripes by which I'm healed. It's all for you, Lord. <laughs> oh, glory to God. <sighs> Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Well, what time is it? I'm right on time today. We're going to go back to this little subject again next week. But I want you to think about also your words entangle with your body. Your emotions get entangled with your, uh, you're all entangled inside to, of yourself. Your soul, your spirit, your body, all three of them are entangled, just like the Trinity is entangled, just like Jesus is entangled in the Father, the Father is entangled in Jesus, and they're entangled in us. That's another threesome. It's all tangled together. God created us that way. That is a law of the kingdom of God. God made us a triune being like he is. And just like the Trinity is all tangled up together, we are all tangled together. Amen. The matter of the things that you own that are made of atoms, everything you own and possess, you're, you're Eden, if you want to call it that. It's all made of matter, made of atoms, and you're entangled with it all. Hallelujah. Think about these things. Think about your body. Think about how an electron microscope goes down at the atom level and shows that your body is actually made of atoms. And if you don't have the confidence to speak right now out loud, some people are shyer than others. They don't do it right away. Then this book, again, I want to go back. It is an extraterrestrial message. It came from outside of our time domain this natural world that we live in. It came in supernaturally to help us be what God created us to be and have what he created us to have. But we have to believe this message, this extraterrestrial message. And what did Jesus say? The power of words. If we would say to the mountain, if we would say to the fig tree, if we would call things that be not as though they were, Oh, just this reality of entanglement. Think about it. Look at your body and realize it's made of atoms. The situation that I'm dealing with is a little atomic creation that has taken, ca taken place in my body that is abnormal. But it's made of atoms. And I have authority over the atoms in my body by my words. And I'm building my confidence about it. Again, this, this isn't a one-time thing. Jesus said, today, don't worry about yesterday. You know, stew over what was and worry about what's going to be. Overcome what you're going to face today. Just, 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 just quip it today. Just be victorious today. And if you have to, do it three minutes at a time. Three minutes. 
Three minutes, I'm not going to be afraid about this. Three minutes, I'm going to practice speaking my word. I'm going to build my confidence. I'm going to meditate on this entanglement situation. And I'm going to realize that thing really is made of atoms. And when I speak, it will disintegrate. Hey, I love it. <laughs> I love being an overcoming woman. You know, the devil hates overcoming women. He hates them. Oh, boy, does he. That's why he withstands women like he does. That's like he, why he likes to work on our emotions and things. But I like every battle that I have with him because through Jesus Christ, I now thanks be unto God who always causes me to triumph. Greater is he that is in me. I trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. This little thing I'm dealing with was created by the law of sin and death. The law of sin and death. I operate and live under the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. And I am not going to have that thing living in my body. In Jesus name. I've got authority. I've been set free from the law of sin and death. By the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Romans 8 2. Hallelujah. Whew. Well the Lord he is marching on. And his army, oh, we are ever strong. And his glory shall be seen upon our land. Oh, raise the anthem, sing the victor's song. Praise the Lord for the battle's won. No weapon formed against us shall stand. Hallelujah, for the captain of the host is Jesus. And we're following in his footsteps. And no foe can stand against us in the fray. <laughs> we are marching in Messiah's band. The keys of victory are in his mighty hand. Let us march on and take our promised land. Hallelujah. God has given us all the tools we need through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus and the ratification of the new covenant and the sending of the coming of the Holy Spirit. So let's march on, saints. March on. God bless you all today. Well, I just get all excited. I'm going to keep on my studies, and I'm just going to keep on feeding, and I'm going to learn more about this atomic business and this quantum entanglement stuff. And, oh, yum, yum, yum. It's better than ice cream. <laughs> Check in with you all later. God bless you all day. Oh, Father, I thank you. They're they catching the vision, Father, of their words going forth like fire. Oh, Father, calling things that be not as though they were. Declaring what they want, not what they have. And setting the their atomic structure in order, Father. Because you have created us in such a way that our words are entangled with the matter of which our bodies are made. And so, Lord, I thank you. This revelation drops on them like a cloud of empowerment in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. <laughs>